This is a bazooki. This is a base yeah, bazooki. Yeah. This is an octave mandola, Ma and yeah. this is a mandola. Yeah, I'm with you. So you're none the wiser. <laughs> My first travels were in uh, Eastern Europe, Bulgaria and Romania, and I, I uh, was fascinated by the rhythms of the, of the dance music there. And I eventually learned it uh, and brought it back to Dublin, and uh, lots of people writing tunes in 7-8 seven, seven, and 5-16 and 11-16, and, uh, and um, yeah, pleased with that. There was a time when people would cross the road when they saw me coming, but uh, uh, Donald was not one of them. Donald was always uh, interested in, in anything new, and, and uh, he quickly embraced the time signatures himself, and, uh, and we, we introduced them to Planksteed. Yeah. Uh, that, that was a, a quite a big ingredient in, in, in the Aaron Planksteed albums. Well, it, yes, it was. I mean, we, we, had, a, we had a tune called uh, Smeseno Horror, which always went down best of everything like you know and, and uh, there was a, a time we talked about um, should we finish with Smeseno Horo and, and, and it was kind of no it's, it's Bulgarian you know we're an Irish band so it always came before the end and uh, well, it's the type of track that kind of was not a commodity but it, it was a a crowd, crowd felt. Well, right. yeah. I mean, the crowd didn't understand the time, the the time at all, which is uh, fifteen sixteen. You know, <laughs> they, their feet would go up to up to a point. There, there would be one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, one, two, three, four, five, and one, two. So they they got the one, two, three, four, and then the one and one, two. They'd, they'd, they'd be kind of. Uh, we said, don't dance to this, you'll break your legs. Yes. So, uh, and today you're, you're, you're here and you're, you're here as solo, surrounded like with, a, as I call it, a garland of instruments. <laughs> uh, the Planksy and all of that era, do you think that, the, I know you've done a, the live Planksy concert, I hope you have, but are there, will, you be, will you be together in that with your friends again? Do you think? Well, not with Planksy because, uh, you know, sadly, Liam, Liam O'Flynn, is no more, and I think we would be uh, it would be disrespectful to him to, to play with another piper. So I think Planksy is, is uh, gone. But um, there are other bands, and uh, you know we have one called uh, Usher's Island at the moment, which is Donal and Paddy Glacken and Mike McGoldrick, John Doyle, and myself, and we're we're going out doing a, a week's touring in Britain uh, in November. You have done some Woody Guthrie, you've done P.C. Guthrie. You do have a bit of a, a touchstone for, for those particular type of artists. Well, Woody Guthrie was my first influence. And uh, I, well, I used to write to him when he was in hospital in, in New Jersey. And, uh, and when I recorded uh, tapes for him, he sang along. So I, I, me and Woody sang together. And is that available? No, I don't know. I, well, it, it may be, but I wouldn't know where it is. Yeah. It might turn out. Yeah, it might turn out. That's amazing. You and Bob yeah. going to the altar of Woody. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. And so where are you today and why are you here today? And does this building mean anything to you? Oh, yeah. Well, I played here about um, probably five or six times. And uh, I always loved this place. It's... Uh, it's the it's for me it's the best gig in, in London, certainly anyway. In eighteen thirty in the sweet county hall. But you crossed the foaming billows till she landed in New York. This is the um this, the fifth no the sixth gig of the of, of a fairly short tour. But it's great to be back in front of an audience, you know, and I uh, I discovered how much I need an audience during the, the, the 19 months of the pandemic. I, couldn't, I could hardly play. I practiced every day and it was kind of, I can't play this anymore. <laughs> but uh, as soon as there were people listening in front of me, it was kind of, oh yes, I can. This, this instrument sounded a bit feeble. It's loud enough out front. It's just, it's just not... Um... It's 
see her marching up the street with her pump up in her hand. I can hear her still at Love Love, where the miners made a stand. And she says, John D., will you kindly tell to me, how could you let your troopers lay them, 13 children down, in the horrors of West Virginia and in Colorado too? Mother Jones and her miners, they never could subdue. And the men they fought and died in their tents and shanty towns. And the women stood like a wall of steel and nothing could batter down. You know, there are always various milestones in the set list. There are songs that you you can't leave out because they uplift uplift the audience or or they move the audience. But there's there's uh, places in the set list where songs can be interchangeable. And um, yeah, I mean, for instance, I wrote a song about about James Larkin called Big Jim. And I, I, I wouldn't do that in, uh, if I was playing in Sheffield or somewhere. I probably wouldn't play that because it uh, wouldn't mean anything to, to Sheffield people. Mm -hmm. But here in the Irish Cultural Centre, I definitely do it. Yeah. Uh, I don't, you're, you're going on soon, so I just wanted to ask you, you, you you're, 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 there's one particular song that, that you're going to perform for us. Is it just called simply Houdini? It's just called Houdini. Houdini. Mm -hmm. What <laughs> I just want to know because I I love him as well, but where does the song come from? I mean, what, were you watching a movie about Houdini or how did that song? I had it in my mind for for many years to write a song about Houdini. I, I like to write songs about uh, people I'm impressed by, uh, either for political reasons or for uh, artistic reasons. And and Houdini was a, I think he was a really nice man. I'd like to have, I'd like to have known him. And uh, I think he was a good man too. I think he he gave money to to poor people, and uh, and of course he was uh, the archetypal professional. He practiced day and daily for these dangerous escapes that he that he made. And would you also have done as a musician? <laughs> well, yes, I've, I've escaped with my life a few times. All right. <laughs> Uh, well, this is a song about uh, Harry Houdini, the great magician and escapologist. And uh, he died, I think, in uh, 1926, which is nearly 100 years ago, but he's uh, remembered worldwide as the great Houdini. Uh, and this is a song I wrote about him. Harry Houdini, the man of the he could escape from nearly anything. His fame and renown. Forever at the summit, forever could be done, Houdini done. Harry Houdini, Hungarian born, taking the whole wide world by storm, getting out of straight jackets and walking through walls. Houdini could do it if it could be done at all. He took 27 needles and he swallowed them clean. He examined his mouth, not a needle to be seen. Then he swallowed cotton thread or a magical blend. The needles came out threaded when he pulled off the end. Locked and chained in the casket of the water, holding his breath much longer than he ought to, accepting every challenge and he never would shun it, for it could be done. Saying, God help us all if he's ever sent down. 
locked and chained and buried alive. The audience afraid that he wouldn't survive. Whatever the risk, Houdini would run it. And he says, now Jenny, say goodbye to the crowd. She tossed her head and she dropped the kick and bow. But the audience said, ah, for heaven's sake, a disappearing elephant, give us a break. In the twinkling of an eye, their doubts he vanished. For it was in there, the elephant vanished. Locked and chained and buried alive. The audience afraid that he wouldn't survive. What are the risks? Yeah, <laughs> 